Is your game of D&D not weird enough? Time to add slime people and flying monkeys. Let's go spell jamming. Spelljammer Adventures in Space is a new campaign setting box set. This is the first time that Spelljammer is back officially in print since 3rd edition, and it is the first campaign setting like box that WotC has done in 5th edition. Uh, it, what that means is it is in fact a box set containing three books and a DM screen, and there's also a map uh, inside one of them of the Rock of Brawl. Uh, inside each of these books, you'll find something for everyone. There's a, a guide aimed at players uh, and running spell jamming ships. That's the Astral Adventurer's Guide. There's also Boo's Astral Menagerie, which is a monstrous manual for the creatures that you'll find in depths of space. And there's also the Light of Xerixis, a pre-written adventure for four characters of fifth level. So why do they say adventures in space? Because Spelljammer touches on the... Uh, star-faring action of D&D of old. Uh, it was first introduced towards the tail end of first and into the early start of second edition. Spelljammer was all about sailing through the wilds of space on a ship, just a plain old ship. And that spirit is alive and well in Spelljammer Adventures in Space today. In the Astral Adventurer's Guide, you'll find everything that you need to play in D&D's space setting, which is uh, wild space and also the Astral Sea. You'll find all of the rules that you need to navigate this strange new environment, uh, which is a lot like being underwater, except there's no water present. Uh, what, what's very funny, though, is you will actually need a swim speed if you want to get around in space. If you don't have a swim speed or a fly speed, then you're going to be at a, a penalty any time that you try and make an attack or use a, a weapon that isn't like a, a piercing weapon. Uh, I, I think it's hilarious that space is secretly just the ocean. But in addition to that, you'll find six new playable races. Uh, these are all races that have been uh, pr previewed before. We've seen them. Uh, we took a closer look at some of them, if you want to check that out. Uh, each of the races has its own unique, like, sort of alien space kind of vibe. There's playable slime people. There's playable insect people. Uh, I think some of them are a lot more powerful than you might be expecting. Uh, definitely worth checking out. You'll also find two new backgrounds that continue the recent trend we've seen in D&D of having backgrounds come with a bonus feat. Uh, they don't add any new feats to the game. If you play as a an astral drifter, for instance, you get the magic initiate feat. My favorite part is that it contains all of the blueprints for the ships. We, we talk a little bit about those over here, uh, but you'll get like blueprints, you'll get deck plans, you'll get m rules for using them. Uh, you also can like kit them out with different weapons. Uh, sadly, there isn't a build your own spell jammer rules, but I think they're modular enough that you could probably figure it out and it seems pretty easy to homebrew your own. I've made two different ship plans so far uh, and it, it didn't take very much work. Each of them has their own uh, different spin on things. Each of them has like some are fast, some are very heavy and carry very heavy weapons. Uh, like most things, like most objects in D&D, they have like a damage threshold where you have to do at least so much damage before you can even come close to hurting them, which does mean that at higher levels, if you kit yourself out right, you could potentially take out a spell jamming ship with a single round. I have already theorized about how I do it. Uh, let's see what you can come up with. And finally, Astral Adventurer's Guide ends with a uh, sort of gazetteer of the Rock of Brawl. This is a a famous location in Spelljammer. It's a city that was built atop an asteroid. It's home to pirates, it's home to, you know, outlaws and mercenaries, but it's also got a very thriving, if lawless, community in it. You'll find uh, trees, a place to restock and refresh your air envelope. There's just a ton of cool stuff to check out in this book. I really like it. Boo's Astral Menagerie is a menagerie of all things monstrous that live in the depths of wild space. There are terrors of the void. There are creatures both cosmic and comedic in here because if you haven't guessed by now the fact that Spelljammer is D&D in space is kind of a... I mean, it's it's kind of a joke, but it's also kind of not. Uh, but this is embodied in monsters like the space clowns, which are clearly modeled by uh, killer clowns from outer space. But you also find a number of things that just exist normally but have space put in front of them, like space hamsters or giant space hamsters, space swine, space guppies, space eel. Uh, there's a, an astounding number of things that kind of look like 
fish, but in space. There's also space mollymox, which is a kind of albatross. I didn't know that until I was looking through this book. On top of all of that, you'll find monsters like vampirates. You'll find solar dragons and lunar dragons on the higher end of the, the power scale. They also introduce cosmic horrors, which are these monsters that are like supposed to be from beyond the far realm. And if you're thinking that they'll be like a creeping alien doom, kind of like the Reapers from Mass Effect, think again, Buster. These are giant space monsters that can level cities, um, but they don't necessarily corrupt everything around them because they're considerate like that. There's also some monsters that are both goofy and extremely deadly at the same time. There's the Eye Monger. These are close relatives of a Beholder. Uh, they look like asteroids until they open up their single eye. And much like Beholders, they have a special anti-magic cone, except it doesn't extend out of them, it's just inside their gullet. They're just these big, goofy asteroid monsters that will chomp you up, spit you out, and they're, they're, I think they'll be a ton of fun to fight. You'll also find uh, my personal favorite, uh, the, the Kindori. These are space whales. Uh, I don't know what it is about uh, like a whale in space, but it's kind of something that I think I've always loved. Or... <laughs> Is there a space whale in Link's Awakening? Uh, spoilers. <laughs> hey, there's a space whale in Link's Awakening too, I've just been informed. So pretty much any media that's ever, you know, like left a mark on your soul, you'll find a space whale in, and I guess that includes Spelljammer Adventures in Space. The Light of Xerixis is the pre-generated adventure, and it is for four characters of levels 5 to 8. Uh, you'll be at like 8th or ninth level by the end of the adventure. If you want to get to 5th level, you can check out Spelljammer Academy on D&D Beyond. In the Light of Xerixis, you find that the biggest problem, the worst thing in space, are elves. Because, of course, there are space elves, or astral elves, and uh, their empire has is causing a problem. If you follow this adventure, you'll kind of deal with a... I guess it's not the usual world-ending threat because it's not any one thing, right? It's That's one of the things that I think is interesting about this is while there are villains, it's not like you you fight them and then like you kill the thing that's going to destroy the world. Uh, it, I don't want to spoil the ending, um, but it's a unique uh, twist on what normally happens and you have some really interesting choices to make. You might save the world, you might decide, hey, you know what? Uh, let's let's go into the depths of space and do other things instead. And all of them feel perfectly valid. So if you want to if you want to get a feel for what Spelljammer could be like, check out or or even just read through and harvest parts of the Light of Xerixis. There's also a truly massive DM screen here. I think this is maybe the biggest one that they've made yet. Uh, I really like it. It's got all of the, like, a, a quick reference for all of the spell jamming rules. Uh, you want to take a closer look at that, you can check out right here. Uh, it has random encounters, ship encounters, pretty much everything that you need to kind of off the cuff get an adventure in wild space going. Or uh, if you're, like, not sure what happens next, just check your DM screen. So ultimately, I think Spelljammer Adventures in Space is pretty cool. Uh, I love the D&D and space aesthetic and uh, sort of, I love the, the tone and the style of it. I think that if you are hoping for like new classes or something, you might want to like try and homebrew your, up, or your own. Uh, there are some on the DMs Guild that you can check out, but this book gives you so much to play with. Uh, it puts you in space, it gives you people that are from space, and it tells you what to do. It feels like it'll be seamless to add what has always been in your campaign world. You just have to go up or, you know, whatever direction. I don't know what your campaign world is like. If you want to shake things up in your campaign, if you want to, like, add even more dimensions or exploration to your campaign, Spelljammer Adventures in Space gives you literally worlds worth of exploration in a single box. Well, that was Spelljammer Adventures in Space. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more about exploring other worlds, including a book that features 13 different other worlds and adventures, check out Journeys to the Radiant Citadel right here. I'm JR from Bowles. Thanks for watching. Bye!